It's the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest 2, hosted by Ron's Trains and Things in cooperation with IMRRO.com and JC's Rip Track, and sponsored by Midwest Model Railroaders. I thank them for the opportunity to participate in this contest and encourage you to go check them out by using the links in the description below. As many of you may know, I am new to the hobby, and like several other contestants, this is my first attempt at weathering freight cars. A couple of weeks ago, I traveled to Lincoln, Nebraska for a train show and found a pretty good deal on five Burlington Northern Western fruit cars. I knew I wanted to enter the contest, so having a few extra cars seemed like some good insurance at the time. I started the weathering process by first creating a wash by using some inexpensive oil paints that I purchased at Walmart. I mixed up one part black to two parts brown on a plastic plate and added thinner a couple of times in order to get the right consistency for a weathering wash. After mixing it up a bit, I applied the wash with a soft and flexible flat brush using downward strokes to avoid horizontal streaking. The goal of this step is to create a base coat that covers the entire car, making sure no shiny plastic is left uncovered. Additional treatments will be more targeted, with some parts of the car only receiving this initial wash. This process goes fast, and if you don't have a lot of time and need to do some quick weathering on a bunch of new cars so they don't look like toys running on your layout, this technique is cheap, easy, and fast. One thing I learned, but didn't have an easy solution for, was how to hold the car, paint it, and not smudge it with my fingers. So I just plowed on and then brush over the fingerprints after I set it down. The next step was to add some red to the brown and black mixture in order to simulate rust color. I then selectively added spots of this rust color paint to the sides of the car. Then using a flat brush, which was dipped in a little bit of thinner, I lightly brushed in a downward fashion across the paint, hoping to form what looked like streaks of rust. This turned out to be a bit tedious, so I'm going to fast forward through most of this. As you can see, there was a fair amount of trial and error and repeated application as I learned how much pressure was required with the brush strokes and how much of the paint would come off as I was doing this. I have to say, more than a few modelers I watched on YouTube made this look a lot easier than it was. But I kept at it and eventually started to get the look I was going for. I was a little surprised to find that the roofs were white when I took the cars out of the package. This posed a little bit of a dilemma when I first started to think about how I was going to handle this. I settled on dabbing paint across the center of the roof and then using a sponge to distribute the paint in a random fashion. Next, it was time to try my hand at pin washing with the intent of creating shadows and to make more obvious some of the details of the car. I first came across this technique when I was watching some videos on weathering model tanks and other army vehicles. This technique uses very thin downed paint that is applied using a very small and finely pointed brush allowing the paint to use surface tension and gravity to flow around various seams and protruding plastic parts. My attempts weren't as refined or successful as those I saw in the videos, but in the end, I accomplished what I had set out to do. Before I try this again, I'm going to have to invest in better brushes. The one I used was not as thin or pointy as those I observed. I ended up using this brush and the thinned out paint to do a more pinpointed application of the technique I had previously used, adding additional layers of weathering to the roof and to the sides of the car. I hadn't started out with this intention, but it turned out to work quite well. Going into this project, I realized that many of the best weathering I had seen was accomplished, or at least greatly assisted by the use of layering and mixing mediums. So after letting the paint dry, 
I applied two light coats of Tester's Clear Coat, sometimes referred to as Dull Coat, but I'm not completely sure if there is a specific product called Dull Coat or if they just call the Clear Coat by that name. I let this dry overnight before moving on to the next step, using pastels. For this project, I added to my pan pastels a box of artist pastels purchased at Walmart. I chose a yellow that closely matched the color of the car and using a file, made some powder to use with a brush. The main purpose of this first application was to fade the black lettering and logo, but it also helped to tone down or hide some of the starkness of the brown red rust streaks. I was fortunate that this cheap set had exactly the color I needed. If it didn't, I'm not sure I can remember how to use a color wheel from grammar school to match up the colors. I then moved on to using Pan Pastel Burnt Sienna, going over and accentuating the streaks already in place, but also adding it to places that had not previously been streaked. I did this along the bottom of the car first and then along the roof edges. I also used a second brush across the center of the sides to brush away some of the powder and blend the application a bit. For me, the most satisfying part of this project was using these pastels. They seem to instantly improve the look and get me much closer to where I wanted to go. You may have seen in another video that I posted me using these on a small house that I'm using for my diorama and I was very happy with the way they work there and was even more impressed with how they worked on these cars. I repeated this process on all four sides and kept reviewing my work and adding more until I had the look I was going for. And truth be told, sometimes I got something I didn't expect, but ended up liking it just as much. For the roof, I concentrated on both the dead center and the outer edges, having seen some prototype pictures that had this look when I was doing my research. One great thing about using this technique is you don't have to worry too much about using too much of the powder. It's easy to wipe off with a dry cloth, or if you want to get all of it off, or virtually all of it off, you can use a damp cloth. Well, we are almost there, getting pretty close to the look I was shooting for. But I not only wanted to give it a bit of a rusty look, I also wanted the car to look like it was in service at getting dirty as it was traveling across the country. To do this, I started with a more earth-toned pastel, concentrating on where I thought dirt and dust would kick up and stick to the sides of the car, and then I added a little to the roof to further tone down the white that was still showing through. For the trucks and wheels, I went back to the burnt sienna and gave them a liberal coat. Again, this was a bit of a challenge because I had not come up with a decent way to hold down the car and not smudge it all up with my fingers. I was very happy with te this technique and couldn't imagine trying to do it with paint and a brush. Unfortunately, after one more look at the overall car, I decided the roof wasn't looking the way I wanted, and it was too uniform and needed to be more dirty than crusty. I handled this by using some of the earth-colored pastels I used for the sides, 
randomly applying it to the roof sections to break up the uniformity. I then went back to the artist pastels and scraped off some black and repeated the random application and also applied some down the center. This seemed to do the trick. Well, there you have it folks, my first attempt at weathering a train car. I had a lot of fun and I hope you did too. I don't have a working layout yet, so here are some shots of the finished car using my yet to be completed diorama. Again, thank you to the organizers and sponsors of this contest, and thank you for watching. If you have any specific questions on how I did something, please leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer. And if you have any suggestions on how to improve, I welcome those comments too. There's so much to learn, and this community has been very helpful. Thank you. If you are a first-time visitor to my channel, please hang around and check out some of my other videos. You may find something you like.